We love ourselves some good studies on this channel, and we've covered plenty of them over the years. Some of them have disproven various myths about cleaner, greener cars, others have required some debunking, and some have just required a little extra context or explanation. Today, we're going to focus on a report that has just started to hit the headlines. A report that says, at least in headline form, that hybrids make better use of batteries than electric cars and are therefore better than EVs. Moreover, the study seems to suggest that in a world of battery shortages, we should be focusing on hybridization, not electrification. But look beneath the headline and it is a little more granular. And in order to understand the premise of the study, we need to look a little more deeply. The study, prepared by British analytics firm Emission Analytics, examined 153 different cars, hybrids, mild hybrids and plug-in hybrids, and compared them to a theoretical electric car with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. The goal of the study? That was to see how much each vehicle could reduce CO2 emissions by per kilometre travelled when compared to a reference internal combustion engine car. And then also how much CO2 reduction was achieved by each vehicle over an internal combustion engine car in terms of grams of CO2 per kilometre travelled per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. And to be clear, it wasn't comparing electric vehicle emissions to internal combustion or plug-in hybrid emissions. But, you know, expect at least one outlet somewhere on the internet to claim just that. The study found that mild hybrids, on average, resulted in a CO2 emission reduction of 25 grams per kilometre travelled, while full hybrids reduced emissions on average by 65 grams per kilometre travelled. A plug-in hybrid with an average battery capacity of 10 kilowatt hours reduced emissions by 43 grams per kilometre over an internal combustion engine car, even if the plug-in hybrid was operating as a mainly internal combustion engine vehicle. At the other end of the same scale, if that same vehicle operated in plug-in only mode or nearly always in battery mode, it reduced CO2 by an average of 210 grams per kilometre travelled. A fully battery electric car, meanwhile, resulted in that same kind of average CO2 reduction as a plug-in hybrid operating in electric mode. That's hardly a surprise. So far then, the data is pretty clear. Plug-in hybrids and electric cars have the largest potential for carbon dioxide reduction per kilometre travelled than any other type of vehicle on the market today. But here's where it gets interesting and where misinterpretations are starting to come in. The study examined the average carbon dioxide reduction per kilometre per kilowatt hour, and it argues that large capacity battery packs in fully electric cars aren't as efficient at reducing emissions as, say, a full or even a mild hybrid. Those vehicles with very small battery packs that are on average as small as 1.3 kilowatt hours and 0.4 kilowatt hours respectively have a high emissions reduction potential per kilometer driven per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. The study says that full hybrids reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 50 grams per kilometer per kilowatt hour, while mild hybrids with their tiny battery packs reduce emissions by 73.9 grams per kilometer per kilowatt hour. Fully electric cars reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 3.5 grams per kilometer per kilowatt hour. Except that's not generally how we measure emissions. Yes, an electric car with a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack will be more efficient over say 100 kilometers than an identical electric car fitted with a much larger, heavier, longer range battery pack because the heavier a car is, the more energy is needed to push itself down the road. Nobody is arguing that fact. But these figures and the way that they're being interpreted feel pretty contrived. The report argues that this data means in a world where lithium ion battery packs for electric cars are in seemingly short supply, it makes sense to build more hybrids and plug-in hybrids than it does long range electric vehicles if our end goal is a rapid reduction in CO2 emissions. And that's the important bit that some people are missing out. If society is eager to transition away from fossil fuels as quickly as possible, hybridization could offer a key, at least for now, temporarily.
Anecdotally, those buying electric cars tend to be coming from more efficient models to begin with, like hybrids or plug-in hybrids. So the actual reduction in CO2 for that owner per mile or kilometre travelled compared to their previous car isn't as great as it might be for someone going from a car that emits several hundred grams of CO2 per kilometre to one that emits 60 or 70. That's a fact. It's also hard to argue too that plug-in hybrids aren't good transitional vehicles because they are. If they are plugged in every night and their usual daily driving duties are carried out in electric only mode though. But if those cars aren't plugged in and only use gasoline, yeah, there are owners who drive their cars like that. They can actually be less efficient as they would have more weight to carry around than a standard hybrid. It's not just the car then, but the way it's used. And influencing behaviours of people is really hard. I should finish by noting a few more things. It doesn't appear that this study addresses the ongoing improvement in electric vehicle battery development, as well as a dramatic reduction in cost for battery production. Cheaper batteries should lead to cheaper cars, which should in turn lead to more people driving electric. And the weight of batteries are improving all the time. And because electric vehicles are far more energy efficient than ones with any sort of internal combustion engine, even heavy electric cars with heavier battery packs do ultimately produce fewer emissions than a car with an internal combustion engine, especially if you charge that car from a cleaner electricity grid. Ultimately, this seems to come down to behavioural analysis, as well as availability of source materials, so battery packs. Battery is ultimately best overall, but if emissions reductions are the goal, maybe a mixed fleet of various different model options, as several automakers have done, like Hyundai and Kia, could be the best solution. At least, it could be if those buying a hybrid or plug-in hybrid are people that would refuse to buy an electric car and would instead buy another heavily polluting vehicle if a hybrid or plug-in hybrid wasn't available. Challenging consumer behaviour? Ah. Oh. That's the big problem. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.